So in this video, we're going to be using Jon Snow's famous data. Well, actually, it's not his data, but it was data that was created based off of his data. Um, GIS obviously wasn't around in the 1800s, but this uh, hopefully is, is an introduction to what perhaps could be done uh, with such data. And I think it's a good example because oftentimes in public health, we're using, uh, at, at one time or another, um, point data. So, um, I did a couple of housekeeping things with my projections just to get my map document set, but otherwise um, what we're starting with is essentially just a blank ARC map document. I'm using the ARC info license. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is just add some data. I'm browsing to my shapefile folder, and in this case my home directory is just my John Snow folder, and I'm going into my John Snow directory, and I have three files. Um, most of you already know this trick, but if you want to add three shapefiles at the same time, you can select the first one and hold down your shift key and select the other three. So I quickly add these. I'm going to ignore my coordinate system warning for now. And so you can see the three files that I've added are the, well, of course, the well-known Broad Street Pump location. Um, the actual locations of the deaths, so these are the spot locations of the deaths um, based off of the information that he had recorded, and then finally the pumps. So a couple of things just quickly. Remember that if I just click on the layer name, I can quickly give it a new one, and that is in no way affecting the actual data itself. And whenever we add new layers into ArcGIS, it automatically gives it sort of this default symbol. Well, certainly if it's point data, it always looks like a diamond and um, will always assign a default color. So I'm just going to clean these up a little bit. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on symbology in this, and I haven't actually set up any custom symbols here, but I'll find something that will work relatively well for a pump location. and this isn't terribly creative at the moment, but we'll just use a little red star for now. There's my Broad Street Pump. I'll represent the others using a similar, slightly different pump color here. And then we will uh, quickly be off and running here. All right, so I got my pumps on there. I got the Broad Street locations and then the deaths. I'm going to make just a big red dot. All right, so this should really get us started. All right, so not the best symbology, but at least I'm out the door with my three layers. Now there's not a lot of attribute data in the cholera deaths um, file. Remember to get to the attributes, I just right click on the layer itself, click on open attribute table. So you can see essentially um, I, I've got X and Y information. I've got an object ID, but I have nothing else about it, right? So in obviously in, in case data, you, you might have some more detailed information. Um, I don't have any date and time stamps or anything like that. All right, so from this point, um, now whenever I'm starting with a new map, if I, if I just want something quick and out the door quickly and I, I don't have maybe my regular access to the Enterprise Geo database or my base layers or whatever, um, you know, a nice handy trick, and, and of course this is great for new map makers, is now if you click on the drop down menu for the Add Data button, you'll see this option here to add a base map. Um, I think this is a fantastic. Uh, addition. It makes maps very quick and relatively painless, uh, and you can see it comes with a bunch of preloaded um, base maps. Now these are these are web map services, which means that this isn't loading in all of the necessary layers to change the symbology and whatnot. It's literally draping an image behind your data, um, 
and but you know for if you're not terribly picky about the symbology and you're not worried about changing the the colors of the street names and that sort of thing I think it works out extraordinarily well um, one of my favorites is just this topographic because I think it's nice and clean and um, generally at a, at a um, nice refined spatial scale for um, an urban area it seems to work really well so I'm going to drop this in as always, it takes a little uh, a while to load. You can just ignore the coordinate warning for now. It's going to drop in a base map layer, and there's my map. So very quickly, I've got something that I can begin working with. And so, of course, from here, I could take this out the door and, and continue you know, on with my paper maps. Um, one of the things that I want to demonstrate in this video, though, is using Spatial Analyst. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on working through all the settings of the cell size and, and everything else, but I want to show you quickly how to make um, a kernel-based density um, from such data. And one of the reasons that, of course, it's important to consider such uh, considerations in public health is we certainly would not want to publish a map like this. Um, since it's showing um, data that could easily be reverse geocoded. So one technique is using a density surface. Again, you still have to be careful with the density surface. But um, And this, of course, assumes that you already have Spatial Analyst. Um, to fire up Spatial Analyst, if you do have it, simply click on Windows, go to Extensions, and select the extension, and then click Close. And um, you can see I've reorganized my tab slightly, uh, but you will find the Spatial Analyst tools under the um, ever-famous ARC toolbox here. And here they are. You've got conditional tools, density tools, distance extraction, et cetera, et cetera. This continues to seem, uh, it continues to get expanded, uh, it seems like, with every release. Um, so I'm going into the density toolbox, and I'm selecting kernel density. Uh, again, I'm not going to go into the specifics of, of the difference between kernel density, line density, and point density now. I kind of want to do this quickly, but um, if you're interested in that, it is definitely worth reading up on. And the ArcGIS help is actually, um, it does a pretty decent job of at least giving you the basics. Uh, and then there's some, there's some great books that can expand on this. So again, I'm creating a density surface that, you know, some of you may call this a heat map, but essentially um, it, it's going to be a way to represent my data in a way that kind of looks like a, a weather map is, is the example that I usually use. Uh, so I select my cholera deaths as my first option. Uh, if you have something representing um, a population which, which sort of works as a, as a weight uh, within the kernel density, you can select it here. I'm not. Um, I select where I want to put my output raster, and in my case, I'm putting it back in my home directory. So I'm going to call this one death density, and click OK. Should just take a second, and I'll get back my kernel density surface. So that looks pretty good. So I'm going to go back into my table of contents now. Just a couple of quick things that I can do to kind of clean things up a little bit. generally like to cut the classes back just slightly. That's kind of up to you, and I, I'm not going to worry about breaking up the range and going into that right now, but I will work a little bit with the color. Okay, so I've picked my color ramp, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and use some um, this multicolor color ramp. It seems to work okay in this case. And um, I've already flipped the colors here. You can certainly do that. Um, some of these ramps obviously won't be loading perhaps in the way that you want. Um, it wouldn't obviously make sense in this case to show the lowest values as red on my map. Um, and so I want to sort of indicate heat here, right? So my cooler areas are going to be blue leading up to a red. Uh, so I'm going to leave it like that for now. Maybe actually I'll add in one more class and I'll show you why. So, oh, there we go. So we got to switch the colors. All right, so that's my results so far. Now, a couple of things I can do to tidy this up a little bit. Um, the first being, I generally like to get rid of this top category. It just starts to clean up my map a little bit. The other thing that I like to do is soften these edges a little bit. So if you go into the display 
um, tab for your labor layer properties and just change it from nearest neighbor to bilinear you'll get some smoother edges here so that's looking pretty good so now you know I'm essentially reflecting the density of the points I really don't need the points on here anymore so I can take them off and you know we're seeing obviously what we all know which is that the uh, cholera deaths clearly cluster around the Broad Street pump um, so another nice feature uh, within Spatial Analyst is the Contour tool, uh, which I think is nice because it's nice to think of these density surfaces as essentially um, three-dimensional, right? It's almost like you have a clustering of points or basketballs and you're throwing uh, a, a blanket over the basketballs and you're, you're, you're trying to represent sort of the, the tightest density of, of all of these shapes. Um, so using the handy search tab here, I've already done a search for contour. Contour comes up. Uh, and the great thing about the search, of course, is that I can easily pick the tool that I'm interested in directly from here, and it'll take me right in. So I pick contour, spatial analyst. I'm going to pick the raster that I just created. Uh, I can browse to where I want to save that contour. And for interval, uh, let's try 1000. Click OK. Oh. There we go. So I got some nice contours. Now they're not matching up perfectly, of course, because I, I didn't take the time to actually set them entirely correct, but um, I could match it up with my legend at this point, and then I've got a way to represent essentially the percentage of points captured within my tightest contours. So I'm going to stop there for now, but um, I hope you enjoyed this quick demonstration. I, I think the data is great. I'll try and post the uh, Jon Snow data links that I did find in case you want to work with this data yourself. Uh, there's a couple of projection things that you'll need to do as housekeeping, and maybe in a future uh, episode I'll take you through those.